Hello there, everybody. Welcome back to episode two of Flame Throne, the fortress with a volcano. So we're going to establish ourselves a little bit further today. In the previous episode, we have found ourselves a nice and sweet hole in the ground. We are sitting in front of a majestic mountain that hosts a volcanic caldera. So, besides the option to have ritual sacrifices at the ledge of the caldera, we also have a virtually endless supply of magma. So, what's not to like about that? Well, the elves that are in war with us, right next door for example. So, this fortress has no weapon grade metal available, so our adventure will be quite interesting. In the previous episode, I have decided to floor my rooms with quartzite, and I am somewhat, uh, well, I I'm regretting that. Because obviously, quartzite is not as available as I wanted it to be, but maybe we can just trick our problems away. So what we're doing as the very first thing today is we're going to get ourselves a quartzite mine together. Because I want to have purple tinted floors. Ah. It just looks so nice next to the black walls. So our goal for this fortress, for those who haven't watched the first episode, is to get a adamantine industry working as quick as possible. Have a fancy lava machinery that keeps our fortress safe. I don't know. I have really not made a strict plan of what to do with the magma, but it is definitely part of the plan to do something with magma and bash some elven skulls to make sure that they understand that this part of the forest is ours. Basically, I want to get them out of the tapered jungles here. They can keep the... well, no, it's... Uh, I know what I mean here. Here, this, uh, this broccoli-shaped uh, forest <laughs> versus the uh, coniferous forest down there. That's at least the rough plan of things. So currently, but currently we're, we're still struggling, you know, we're uh, setting up our first fields. Kivish is an absolute nobody, nothing really uh, going on with himself except for his last name, Righteous Trades. Isn't that a wonderful name? So yeah, but uh, we're after the quartzite here today. There we go. Maybe we will use these chambers one day as magma reservoirs, who knows? The beautiful thing about War Fortress Mining is, whatever area I hollow out, I can still build stuff in there and uh, just do my thing. There's uh, no nothing bad around it. So my animals are dying, so we need to have a uh, pasture for them. I am preparing an indoors pasture at some point, but currently we're just too far away from that plan. We still have a couple of days before anybody will try to attack our fortress, so I think we're, uh, for now, good to go. So, which brings me to another point. I wanted to forbid the storage of seeds in here. The food situation is currently still one of the most pressing matters at hand. Due to the fact that I failed to get myself a capable farmer, I am somewhat suffering now, so tell you what we're going to do. I'm not going to leave this task to Kivish alone. We're uh, we're going to give the uh, the expedition leader the honors. Speaking about the expedition leader, I want to introduce our our special dwarves again. You know the main protagonists. Sort of a tradition that I have lost a little bit of track a little bit track of in uh, the previous. Uh, Fortress Deep Guard, but uh, well, only a little bit. So let's see, what's my expedition leader busy with? Anyways, call join merchants. So this uh, season's mark is these. So call, what up? You are the person here in charge. We are the group here's the lens of rewarding. I think that's a uh, acceptable name. I've re I've expected worse. And he's unable to make decisions without a great deal of input from others. Uh, what a leader. He does everything in his power to avoid excitement and stress. Yeah, that's definitely leader material. 
He's intellectually stubborn. Yeah, it's getting better and better. Rarely changing his mind during a debate, regardless of the merits. Absolutely politician material. He is stubborn. Ah, he's not particularly interested in what others think of him, and he has a calm demeanor. He does not easily fall in love and rarely develops positive sentiments. He's rarely happy or enthusiastic, and he finds helping others emotionally rewarding. Seriously? Something like that? Well, he doesn't handle stress well, and he isn't given to flights of fancy. He tends to be a little bit tight on resources when working on projects. All right. He likes working outdoors. Ooh, what a dwarf. So he likes quartzite? Ah, my man. Lay pewter, red spinel, gauntlets, backpacks, slugs for their slime trails. What? The words of the scholarly satins, the sound of the cerulean couple flute, and the sight of the poet of glistening. So he loves the art. When possible, he prefers to consume dwarven beer. He absolutely detests leeches. Who doesn't, my friend? Who doesn't? Now... I seriously wonder why hauling has so much of a higher priority for my men, but uh, whatever. Currently nobody is starving, so I'm taking things easy. Ah, reinforcements! So that's been about time. Who's coming on in? So for especially where are they coming on in? So they, they seem to come from this border of the map, okay? So far, I can only see one family of Ral, the Crafts Dwarf, hailing from the Lone Anvil, so that's a long timer. Summer 103. Okay. Pretty sure that there's also going to be the father of the flock. And... Ah! Udil Avuzis. Alright, Udil Mineclear. The haggard dwarf. So, the thing is, this guy here once was had a uh, tissue, uh, a, a rupture in in his lung, and ever since Udil's life is just misery. I've seen this guy, the uh, or this uh, woman. <laughs> Sorry, it's easy to just, uh, to get distracted here in my previous fortress where she was already hating her life as a scholar. Welcome to this fort, Udil. It's one of those dwarfs that is very, very uh, mortally wounded and, uh, yeah, had been mortally wounded and is still not recovering from this. Life's hard sometimes. Well, the good part is that we now have more people that can help out with the hauling and all the other things that need to get done. Here our first farm is happening. Let's see, do we have a better planter? Nah. So Kivish will learn it all the hard way. That's okay for me. So we're going to unassign Kivish from this task and leave the herbalist's task to, the, uh, to my expedition leader. Herbalism and tree cutting goes well hand in hand, I'd say. All right, so let's make sure we gain some more of the quartzite that we require. And next step, we require beds. There's no way around that. All right, so we also need some place where we can drop the finished products of ours. Especially the furniture. So let's do this like that. Alright. Let's see, how far did we get? Hey, that's a nice amount of quartzite blocks already. Those are some crazy rooms. I like it already. So, that's only five rooms, though. More people than that. Let's just hope that no drunkard will one day accidentally get a, uh, a dent into the caldera. 
I'm very happy that this in this game there are no uh, tantrums like in RimWorld. Imagine somebody getting a tantrum and bashing in the wall in his fed in his room, gushing his entire uh, living quarter in uh, red hot magma. What a way to die! So we are going to need doors as well, otherwise the privacy is not given. And we are going to go very pragmatic here with the day site that we got, or death site. I really need to look up the pronunciation. With so many minerals, I, I simply have no clue. Whatever. I'm sure you guys forgive me. So poor Udil has trouble breathing. That's the big problem of hers. Uh, him. Whatever. With dwarves, I have a regular uh, gender confusion. I, I, ever since I, I deem dwarves more of a gender fluid thing, you know they're all grumpy. What's your what's your gender, grumpy? Quite okay if I'm drunk. Alrighty, so probably I should more try to put those rooms together in a way that I like then try to make the corridor run along instead. Yeah, that looks uh, like a very, very promising strategy. Look at that. Yeah, so we're going to put the uh, living area down like that. This is one apartment area that I already like. Maybe we put down different colors on every floor, because I want to proceed with this uh, method on every floor until we have all the rooms. I mean, come on, it's going to be very warm and cozy all day long. And until further notice, we're going to forage the hell out of this place. There we go. Training will also make my herbalists go better. Oh yeah, and we need stockpiles for dead things. So here's the refuse. And here's the bodies. There we go. Very important, otherwise your folks will know, have no room to put down this stuff. We're also going to go into the uh, black magic of DF hack and enable auto butchering. It's a very, very simple thing. I like it. It just makes sure that you don't have too many animals. And whenever a new animal hits town, it's making sure that these new animals are also kept in numbers. It's easy to reconfigure and I really like it in many, many ways. So I have just decided that we're going to make this thing here the proper town plaza. So we're putting down services now here. All right, so let's make sure we also got ourselves four mugs. And I'd say any fortress like this, we definitely want obsidian mugs. Obsidian is absolutely available. It's everywhere basically around me. So we won't have any trouble whatsoever using it everywhere in our daily appliances. I think this should be also one of our major export efforts. Alrighty, we get in there, friends. The food stockpile is on a decent uh, point. What I do want to see though is a loom. A clothier. Oh, here's the uh, things that we always need. A butcher and a tanner. Then we're going to make this hall a little bit wider. And after that, we require a farmer's workshop. Currently, we're not planting any quarry bushes. Well, we do. 
because the, the quarry bush is absolutely utterly useless without proper workshops so we're going to go and make cloth bags yeah bit by bit the fortress is coming together thing is we are still very low on numbers therefore the things that i assign they do take their sweet sweet time with it for example the building jobs that i have issued still far from being done but our food and drink stockpiles are looking good for a starting fortress that is there we go the tanner and the butcher so we can utilize whatever dies on our footsteps and yeah so let's check on out um obsidian is a magma safe stone i'm pretty sure about that but uh let's double check yes so we're going to make our mechanisms also out of obsidian because magma safe uh um, mechanisms are something everybody wants to have there is no world in which you are not interested in magma safe mechanisms, believe me. Because currently, in how, how Dwarf Fortress works, you don't have any option whatsoever to decide what mechanisms will be used, unless you use DF Hack and such, uh, such little tools, but... Uh, when you link bridge with something, you are you, your dwarves will pick up whatever mechanisms they can get. So I've come up to the decision to simply have only magma safe mechanisms. So they can never pick a mechanism that will mess them up. <laughs> Genius. So that's at least the thought process behind it. If it's genius or not, I want I don't want to. Uh, somebody else has to decide that. Now we're putting up a trade depot right in front of the fort or pasture. I mean, it looks like a uh, weird modern carpet, but uh, who am I to, to judge? Now, it's very, very early for the um, caravan to hit town like that. So I'm not quite sure how we are going to handle this. So. I'll need also a lot of bins. Let's order these. Let's see what we can trade here. I am happy that our founding uh, people are now getting themselves a proper home together. There's still so much work to be done though. But uh, yeah, we get in there. So next step, process plant to bag. Then we want to shear animals. We want to spin, whoa, no. We want to spin thread and we want to milk animals. Yeah, there's a lot of things that you need to set up in, in, in every beginning of a word, but these things are so darn important. So whenever there is a smidge of processable plants you do this we're checking every day if we can shear animals if there is any thing we can spin into thread we do that and this one is also ought to be checked daily now this way we're uh, getting the most possible resource out of our animals and hopefully all the milkable animals will give us something and the shearable animals will eventually also give us cloth to work with. So let's see how that'll play out. All right, so far, so good. Let's see, the previous... Uh, people brought some more animals that need to be pastured. So altogether, this place has a couple of troublesome animals, giant sparrows, Ugh. horrible creatures. But luckily all and everything in our fortress will happen with a roof above our heads. So birds are not as dangerous. 
Alrighty. So, well, thing is, stone fall traps are really the lowest tier of traps, but they are also the most available of traps. So, yeah, we're doing this, friends, because we have to. Okay. I kind of wonder why nobody is constructing anything back here, but uh, yeah, now they do. It's usually because you just have made too many jobs all at once. That's that's the typical reason for that. So we get some company. Baroness Consort is arriving. Sadly, they haven't built the, uh... Wait a sec. What's happening with my game? So for some odd reason, Suspend Manager is, uh... Immediately killing the game. And we have a uh, heavy, horrible FPS spike. What the hell is happening? Well, it's over now. So something had serious pathing issues, if you ask me. All right, we're ordering iron and bronze because these are weapon grade materials for us and it'll help us a lot so let's see ah, it wasn't uh, me trying to enable the suspend manager it was i don't know these creatures showing up i have no clue i only know that these will make trading hell of a pain yeah, well, it is what it is. We are a heavily overworked fortress. The problem that our fort also has is that four of 14 people are children that are not ought to do any work. So that also doesn't make things happen faster down here. I also have announced a lot of jobs that need to get uh, done eventually. So a lot of people are nowadays stuck on the uh, workplaces. And I really, really wonder what's making the FPS spike like that. Seems like this mountain does have some nasty pathing issues. It's the only thing that I can uh, make out of this. Well, we'll see about that. It's so far a decent start. Flame Throne has a uh, workshop area. We're uh, setting up ourselves now with a really lively looking uh, apartment area. So, life's good, isn't it? It's just very, very noticeable that all the um, orders that I've placed are currently really overburdening the uh, available workforce. Good for us that more people are arriving. So yeah, they love to arrive on this uh, on this utmost corner of the map. So Zutan Cobalt urged, member of us since the Lone Anvil, Momus Pokeriddled, also a Lone Anvil person, Autumn 100, oh boy. Legendary Stonecutter, definitely can use your services. Litast Ink Skins, lover of Regoth. Started his career in Tame Wild. All right. Then Ineth Treaty Found, I don't remember that one. Lone Anvil Person, Spring 105. So uh, one of the last of that uh, lock. 
Hey, uh, horses and merchants are getting into fights. I mean, yeah, chaos are just uh, stuff from nightmares. So yeah, I, I bet that these guys, yeah, 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 they they are they are the problem, or us failing to uh, construct that uh, place. You could now argue about that. So Udil is stumbling around. That is uh, due to the injuries. She has become haggard, trouble breathing every day. Does that to you, I guess. Well, let's make sure that the animals of our new arrivals are properly zoned. And, well, altogether, I mean, it is not ideal, by all means, no. But it is also not a horrible thing. Obviously, we're working on the uh, food industry very, very decently. Look at the uh, food stockpiles finally coming up. Or bedrooms are coming together so people can finally have some privacy. And yeah, I'm happy. It's a good start, if I ever saw one. Now we just need to get that trade depot up so our friends here don't stand there forever. I reordered that in the hopes that this might... Uh, Rekindle the interest of my folks. Do you hack move trade goods? Nah, that's not for. That's not helping. I wish you could focus a uh, a trade site or a, a work site more specifically and tell your people that they are ought to work here, especially here! Exclamation mark. So. Let's get ourselves a nice temple of Erdem. You see, my people only worship two gods, Erdem and Ral. Technically, there's also gods for depravity and death, but they just refuse to. It's fun. <laughs> All right. This one I'm going to make smaller now. As this hall here really only exists as a uh, interim solution, so to speak. Let's do both temples here. Ral and Erdem. So people can find their time to worship here. I like the idea of that. Good. So I'm very, very happy with that beginning, because we have now all the things together that we need to survive. The only things that I am now lacking still is a place to farm and a fortress to run. But uh, yeah, it's all going to come together. Jokes aside, we will have to dig deeper very soon, but uh, for starters, I really want to get the bedroom situation together and most importantly, make sure that we have some uh, rockfall traps to, behind, to hide behind and some mechanisms to make sure that we can lock our fortress up if something, some baddies arrive. Because currently I'm really, really scared of an invasion force of the uh, pointy years. Because at the end of the day, they're at war with us, and we're claiming this big fat volcano right next to their doorstep. So, if I would be an elven strategist in in command, I would try to get me out of here, or we have properly sunk or or hammers into the uh, mountain. Anyways, my friends, so. I think this is the point where I will say goodbye for today while I'm carving out a couple of extra bedrooms. And I hope you enjoyed the show. I certainly did. This is, uh, well, how to put it? I, I always love volcanoes, all right? And uh, I only don't play volcanoes more often because volcanoes are freaking OP. So you'll see what I'm talking about over the course of the time. I think we need to make it like this. Yeah, that's like it. And yeah, it's going to be a fun, fun, fun fortress. Uh, except for 
if we if we get overrun by the uh, elves before we reach the fun part. We'll see about that. Anyways, drop me your comments down below, leave a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and check out the description box where you can find lots of links to all the previous fortresses I played here on YouTube. Also feel free to support Icon Gaming financially, there are cool links down there. Channel memberships get early access to all the pre-uploaded episodes that I did. And yeah, thanks for everybody who's supporting this channel. And thanks especially to you for watching this video. I am always happy to see that so many people watch these. So see you all next time and have a good one. Bye bye.